Hello and welcome to week 35 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in the space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to have a discussion around the bindings used for load balancing with the reverse proxy, in particular with ARR, or Application Request Routing. So the last few weeks we've been talking about web farms and ARR in a load balancing solution. Today's lesson we want to build on the previous lesson so I assume that you already watched that and we're going to be jumping right in here. So today's topic is in regards to the bindings as they go through application request routing or the, the reverse proxy and how do we bind on the back end nodes. And so let's take a look here at this diagram to understand what I'm talking about. So you notice here if we have a request coming into the web and this is our ARR server up front and these green boxes here, these green blocks are referring to websites. So you can see there's eight up front. So, of course, then we also need to have those eight websites on the back end nodes as well. And so you notice if you add it up, you have the eight up here, 24 in the back, or 32 bindings total. So how do you have 32 unique bindings so that each knows their own role and knows how to work together? So that's kind of what we want to talk about here today. So in particular, there's three main bindings that come into play. They are uh, shown here in this diagram. Actually, this is from a talk I did in 2010 in TechEd. And so we see here the three main bindings. We have the host header, the IP address, and the port. And so as it travels through ARR, the ARR servers, at this level, uh, let's say our host header is www.site1.com. We have an IP address and the port is 80 or 443. So as it goes through ARR, each binding responds a bit differently. For example, the first one here, the host header, it goes through untouched. It's going to keep that www.site1.com all the way through to the web server. And the web server here can actually bind via the domain name. The IP address, on the other hand, will change because it's a reverse proxy. So it comes in, this is a request that the original website or the user at the end will make. But then this here is going to have a different IP address that needs to be bound to this server here. So this will change. The port itself it kind of appears to go right through 80 to 80, but it's really what you specify here. So commonly you're going to use 80, and then if you use SSL offloading, which is the default, you use 443, it's going to tunnel through 80 on this end. So this is customizable, this will change, and this remains untouched. Unless, of course, we touch it. So let's look at an example for each, and then you can decide which one works better in your situation. So let's start with some bindings with this remote IP address being different in each one. And so let's go to this diagram here. And basically what we want to do is we want to assign a unique IP address for every one of these sites here so that we know how to bind it. And so let's use two examples. We're just going to use two sites, these first two, and we'll set up two on each of these nodes. And actually we only have two back-end nodes. So as an example, let's take a look here at the ARR node, and we're going to give it a primary VIP, or virtual IP. And then we're going to say Web01, let's call it, and Web02. So Web01, let's give it an IP of 10.240.230.10 and for Site1. And then we're going to have 10.240.230.11 for Site2. And then here we're going to do 10.240.231. And actually let's make that 230.110. And then we'll make this 10.240.230.11. 111, so notice you're going to have to plan this for all the sites. And if you're using the internal IP addresses, you have an abundance, hopefully, uh, but you may not have control over that, and that's where we'll look at these other options. But now let's set this up so you can actually see it in action. So this one here now is our primary node. And so if we were to create a server farm, and we're going to call this site1, and notice that the server address, and here's where we're able to enter this, so site 1, we're going to bind to 10.240, okay, let's try this, 10.240.230.10, and we're going to do 10.240.230.110, and notice what I'm doing is I'm using site 1 on the two different servers, right? So now I have both of those bindings, and we'll say no to the rule, and we'll set that up manually as I've covered in other lessons. So here's site 1, and let's do the same for site 2. And we'll call this site 2, 10, 240, 230, and 11, and 111. Okay, so apart from the bindings, which I'm not going to cover here, we have the two sites set up, 
and bound to the backend nodes. Now let's actually look at the web servers and what we do here. And so let's go into one of the nodes. We, because of shared configuration, which again we've covered in previous weeks, I only have to make the change on one server. And so let's say we were to add the site, site one, and I'll point it to a place that let's say had DFS sharing. Let's go in here and we'll just make it, let's just do this instead. Let's call it domains and then we'll call this site one and then site two. And as a, se as a separate work item, we'll actually do the sharing here on the back end. We're going to point to site one and in our bindings, we can, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add the IPH to 10, 240.230.10, and we'll leave a blank host name. And now we have the site one. We'll go in and add our second binding. Now, this is interesting. This throws people at first. Um, notice what I'm doing is on this server, I'm adding the binding for the other server here as well. And so what we see is we see one that's active and one that's, that's not even used on this node and vice versa on the other. It doesn't hurt at all to have a stale binding, an unused binding. So this way all the nodes have all the bindings for site one on site one. So now let's do the same here for site two. Okay, so now we've set up all the bindings. Now obviously the server itself and the network bindings, they have to be legitimate IP addresses. You can't just make that up and add it to the server as well. So now the first node is able to, uh, basically we have all our bindings uniquely handled by a unique IP address for every site per every node. Again, going back to this diagram, we have an IP here and here and here and here. And if we had a third node, we'd have two here as well. And then on the front end, we would be setting up our bindings as well. So this way we're binding with unique IPs per site. Okay, so let's move on to the second option. Again, let's go to this diagram here. And so we've covered how we can bind with unique IPs. Basically, every per site, per server, we have a unique IP. Okay, what about this? What if we want to share IPs and not use as many on the back end? You can imagine how unruly this could get if you have dozens of sites and dozens of servers. You could have hundreds of IP addresses. It's completely reasonable to see that. So here's another option, is you can use the host header on the way through. And let's try this situation now with two. So with two sites. So instead, let's kind of pretend to tear this down and set it up separately. And what we're going to do instead is let's just use the primary IP of these servers. So uh, I have an internal and external, so let's just find out what the internal one is. And it's 10.240.518. Let's jot that down. And this is web02. And then we have web01. And that's going to be 10.245.10 is Web01. Okay, so we're just going to use those two IPs. Let's say we've been assigned these by our ISP, and we want to just rely on that only. So now what we can do, uh, you can, now, now it becomes an interesting question. Do you use two server farms, or do you use a single server farm? And there's a reason for each. If you want less configuration up here and things more generic, then you can actually use a single server farm, which you can call a catch-all. The only problem you have is your health tests. If you want a unique health test per site, then you want to set up one each, even if it has identical server settings in here. So let's assume two different ones, because we want two different health tests. So we're going to go into our servers, and we're going to delete these. And instead, let's set it up with add a server. And we're going to do 10, 240, And we'll add that one and 10, 245, 10, and add it. And now we're going to go into site 2, and we're going to add exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to go add server. Okay, so they look the same, but what we now have the option is putting a different health test per. So we could say, for example, site2 and lb test.aspx, and we would be able to test that. And we could do the same here as well, except that this would be site1 test. And now notice what we're going to have to do then is we have to make sure that one of the servers listens to site1 and one listens to site2. So let's now set up the back end node for this. 
and there's, then there's going to be one more part too, is the front end virtual IP we also need to look at. Okay, so we got site one and our bindings. And so what we're going to do is we're going to remove these two. And we're going to say IP address is all unassigned, but now we're going to depend on our host header. Site1.com, and then don't forget about your non dub dub dub. So what we've done now is set up both domain names, www and non www, here, and it's listed on any IP. We don't care what IP, what server it comes to, it doesn't matter. But if it comes to the server and it's requesting www.site1.com, Site1 is going to take that request. We'll do the same thing here with Site2. So we'll remove this one. We'll edit this one to all on assigned www.site2.com. And site2.com. So the back end is now prepared. But notice this only works if you have a fairly small list of domain names. If you have a, a huge list of domain names, you have org, net, dot com, a bunch of subdomain names, and you don't want to put them all here as bindings. Or uh, if you have a wildcard thing, for example, a city related thing, you know, city dot something, you know, dot mycities.com, in that situation, you don't know what that domain name is. And in that situation, you're not going to be able to use something like this because you don't have a static or a manageable list of domain names. So that's where your limit here comes in. Uh, but as long as you can control this list, then you're completely fine here. Okay, so this covers our second option, which is this one here is you can actually use the domain name untouched on the back end servers if you want to. And then you leave your bindings to all unassigned. Now a third option you can do is actually start playing with different ports if you want to. So let's take a look at that. And so now let's instead of here on the servers, you can actually go in here. And one of the limits here is you can't edit, but that's no big deal. What we do is we can remove and add it again. And so it's 10 to 45, 10. And you say advanced settings. And rather than 80, let's make our HTTP port 81. Okay, so we're going to say our site one is 81. Okay. And then 18, we're also going to replace with 10, 245, 18. And we're going to change this to 81. And then our site 2, we're going to actually replace that one and set it to 82. So now we go to the front end nodes, now on the web node, and we would change our binding. And rather than binding on 80, we're going to bind on 81. And we can use IP is all unassigned and host name is all unassigned. So what's going to happen here is it doesn't matter what domain name anymore. You're using a unique port. And we do the same. And actually, we just remove the second one. So we just need the single binding here. And so port 82 has been set up uh, on the bindings here. So that now will allow the front end node to know which site to bind to on the back end nodes. So let's quickly review what we talked about. And next week, what I want to cover next week is another trick to using host headers uh, with different domain names coming through. And so we're going to show something. We're going to use URL rewrite to do a couple tricks here. So we'll cover that next week as a standalone item. Okay, so to review here, we have the, I, the IIS bindings that come through the proxy server. There's three, host header, IP address, and port, and they respond differently. So you can leverage what the request looks like on the web server to determine how to bind to it. And let's look at this here. And this diagram really shows us how does these front end eight nodes know on this node know how to refer to these sites on the back end node. And that's what we talked about. We have those three options that are available to you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. By all means, add comments to the blogs. I love to respond to that and keep up. And I love to hear from you. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great week.